Everything that is old is new again. Today we're going to talk about vintage. Whether you embroider or sew, there's some special tips and tricks to get the best embroidery or decorative stitches. Hi, I'm Hope Yoder with Embellish, manufactured by R&K Distributing. Let's talk linen. Let's talk vintage. Do you sew or do you embroider vintage? I've got some samples here. I want to talk about a lot of different ways that you can make embroidery sewing more effective, looking better when you're done. So first thing I wanted to let you know is we have this great reference material on the webpage rnk-embellish.com and you're just going to go under the resources tab and you'll find this and you'll want to print this. And when you look at this, it gives you recipe for success for everything from burlap to minky. And we're going to be talking about linen, which is found on page three of the document. So everything we have here, uh, we have a little recipe that you can print to have your own sheet. But before we get started, this is a magazine article that I wrote for Classic Sewing for Children magazine. And it was a purchased blouse from J. Jill, their big linen blouse. So it's a coral pink blouse. And I really loved this thing. I actually embellished it vintage with a little purchase lace. So this is an embroidered. Uh, the magazine article told us how to top stitch the lace on. But what I want to talk about is this really pretty vintage machine embroidery design. And so the design is from the Steampunk embroidery collection from Designs by Hope Yoder. This has original SVG artwork, so be sure to check that out for all you crafters and craft and cut owners out there. So we have all the designs on the back, but notice the designs are applique fabric, but my shirt looks vintage. And the reason why it looks vintage is I just used a different applique fabric. But let's get started with the first step. The first step would be deciding what designs you want. So steampunk, while you would never think of that as a vintage, airy, lacy design, it can be. So I need to know where I'm going to put the design. And that brings me to one of our beautiful projects that works with your embroidery software program Instead of printing a template on paper, you can print it on embellished sticky printable template. And it's inkjet friendly, so you're going to place this into your printer. And then you're going to print the design that you want. And so this is um, inside in little sheets pre-cut. So I'm going to move that aside to show you another sample that we used a template on. Now this is a purchase blank. It is a bread cloth and so if I hold it up and you can see it, um, it's made to put in a basket to wrap this way. But we used our beautiful matte thread on both of these samples. And the matte thread is over here on this beautiful cupcake turner because they look like sprinkles on a cupcake. 40, uh, 40 weight polyester, 40 weight 100% polyester, beautiful matte threads that just give a vintage look to anything. So if you want to embroider vintage or you want to sew vintage, change your thread and automatically that's going to give you a vintage look like you see here. But the template, I notice how perfectly placed the design is in the center and in the corners of the bread cloth. And the reason for that, and by the way, this is our Roses and Arrows embroidery collection. Comes with a free pillow pattern. So those are the designs used there. And I've got another sample with our Pop Paisley embroidery design. Now this is a bread cloth I have yet to embroider. If I would stay home long enough, instead of going out and meeting everybody and doing the events that I love so much, I might have this bread cloth done, so maybe this summer. And so here's another blank bread cloth. And I have the printable template already on here. And we just took this design and rotated it four times. And the printable template is just really like a ginormous sticker. And instead of penning a paper, you can stick this and use this again and again and again. And you don't embroider through it. So when you hoop your design, before you start the embroidery, you're going to remove the template. So that kind of gives you an idea. If it's a wearable, like a shirt, then you can try the shirt on and just stick the template to it. Make sure you remove it before you embroider. Um, ask me how I know that. You can only imagine. All right, so back to this shirt. All right, 
you're gonna print your template on the template sticky, place it where you want it, and then we're gonna get ready to embroider it. Now linen is beautiful. It's modern and vintage all at the same time, but sometimes it can be problematic because it's an open weave and it shifts and it's thin. And sometimes when you hold it up, you can see through it. So the stabilizer that you're gonna want to use for beautiful linen is going to be our embellish fusible dissolvable tearaway. Now there's a video I really want you to watch if you've not already, and I'm not sure what we're gonna name it, but it was the very first video, a springboard to tell you why do we have so many stabilizers? Why is there a fusible and a non-fusible and a sticky and a topper? Be sure to watch that video so the rest of this makes sense. So if I can fuse my fabric, do it. And what I mean by that is linen is a beautiful fabric and it takes the heat of the iron with no problem. So I can easily fuse the linen fabric to the fusible dissolvable tearaway. So we do have a non-fusible version and that would be a bad choice for this because stabilizer should do what its name implies. You shouldn't just think about putting something stiffer than the fabric underneath the fabric and think that the fabric was stabilized. That's a mouthful. So if I was going to sew on a sewing machine, decorative stitches, vintage stitches, and because I heard over the years, I just shove a piece of stabilizer underneath a limp piece of fabric and think that it's magically gonna change the properties of the fabric, and yet that's not gonna happen. But now if I did the same thing and I fused the dissolvable tearaway to the limp fabric. Then the fabric and the stabilizer become one and I truly have changed the properties of the stabilizer. So I have a sewing sample to show you. And let's see, I've got my beautiful little piles of all the pretty things back here. But let's just start. This is a bad example. So let me take a bad example. Let's just get a close up look at this. Now I did use the right stabilizer. I did use the dissolvable tearaway, which by the way, is the perfect stabilizer for vintage stitches. The base is made of 50% water soluble fibers that are gonna wash away and 50% of our tearaway fibers that are gonna stay underneath the thread only. That's why you wanna use this with vintage or with linen because most of it's gonna wash away and it still leaves stabilizer behind the thread. But if I don't use a fusible one, can you see how limp that is? And if I just did a wing needle decorative entredo vintage stitch, look at that warping. That's not very pretty. So even though the dissolvable tearaway part of it was right, the fact that I didn't fuse it created a nightmare. So then if I just take the fusible version of this and I fuse it with a medium temperature iron to the back of my linen fabric, look at that. Now I have changed the fabric. So if you look at this compared to that, all right, you see that this is a hot mess this is controlled. And so I've got my controlled piece and I did the same decorative stitches to fusible version of our dissolvable tearaway. And look how amazing that looks. So I could embellish, get it, my fabric before I cut out the sewing pattern. Now, I just, I did make a little sample, ah, hiding underneath my um, beautiful clutter-free station. It's kind of like at home. The more pretties I have, um, the more I have to hunt for it. Hey, here's a motto for you. This would be great. I used to have an embroidery design that I put in my sewing room. Organized people are too lazy to look for it. All right, just a thought that popped in my head. But anyway, this is the same fabric and it, the dissolvable tearaway is still flexible and soft and yet it adds stability to the fabric. And so I took this same thing and then I just made a little mug rug and I wove some cool thread over and under the holes with a tapestry needle. And what I wove over and under were two strands of our matte embroidery thread, 40 weight. And so just a big hand sewing needle, I just came up and under the holes to give it a striped effect. All right, so sewing or embroidery is the same thing. If you can fuse it, do it. So I fused the dissolvable tearaway 
behind the linen fabric with a medium temperature and then I'm going to go ahead and hoop it. Now, are you worried about hoop burns? In the event that your fabric might get crushed or have a big crop circle or a hoop circle and you may not want to hoop it, I have another solution for you. The dissolvable tearaway, we have a fusible and a non-fusible version. Half water soluble, half tearaway. But we have another secret weapon called sticky tearaway and it's the same foundation as our dissolvable tearaway and our fusible dissolvable tearaway but now it's sticky. So you've got a lot of options. If you watched our other videos you know a topper is really going to make a huge difference. It's going to add a little bit of space between your thread and your linen fabric so the embroidery does not sink down underneath and the choice for this is our embellish rinse away clear topper. We have an iron away clear topper, but that stays behind the thread forever and a day, even after laundering. I want this linen to be nice and flexible when I wash it and drapeable, so I want the topper to completely wash away beneath the thread. So embellish, rinse away, clear topper. I've talked to you about a lot of things, but I have a couple more inspiration pieces underneath. So let's get a real pretty, um, picture of our steampunk vintage. So what I've done here, instead of cotton fabric that I quilt with, I used an English cotton netting or you could use a nice soft tool. So that gave us the vintage look. All right, and then I added a little lace at the top and I've got this beautiful sample. But here's a sample and this actually, all the directions for this pillow are found in this embroidery collection called Sip and Sew Tea Party. Now this is actually the curriculum for our past event called the Sip and Sew Tea Party. And what we did at this event is we made all these amazing sewing embellishment techniques. So here we have folded tucks, here we have pin tucks, and then we have some um, beautiful ribbon, silk ribbon work, Mexican folded tucks. This is actually an embroidery design. And on this CD, you're gonna get all of those um, different embroidery designs so we just put that there but what I want to show you is that technique with the wing needle to sew vintage let's get a close-up right here of this beautiful area and what that is is the same thing as what we just talked about so guess what I use the fusible dissolvable tear away on this white thin cotton fabric and then you see the strands instead of running the DMC thread, or rather the mat thread, I ran DMC cross stitch thread over and under the holes. So you can get a modern quilted look, or if you change your thread and change your fabric, then you can sew vintage. So that is pretty much, oh, I have one more inspiration here. Now who would think this? This is a really fun embroidery collection, and this is called Espadrille Fabric Couture. So I made the shoes. Well, I embroidered the fabric or I embellished the fabric first. So I took cotton fabric and I embroidered it. And the direction for the shoes are in the soles that you purchase from um, Dritz. And so the design collection, we just took their pattern and we fashioned embroidery in the shape of their pattern to go around the toe and the heel. So this particular design, let's see, is right here on the back. And you can see we've just stitched it with black fabric, really cute, comfortable shoes. So espadrille fabric couture, but check out those flowers. And so while that was the original one, what if you wanted to do a lightweight kitchen towel? And this, I don't know if, if I hold it up, if you can see the light through it, it's a very lightweight towel. And this is probably more of a decorator towel. I don't know if I would actually use this, but it would look beautiful. Now on both ends, we have the embroidery perfectly placed because we use that giant sticker again, the embellish sticky template. We did that, but this is actually the same embroidery from the fabric couture, espadrille, same flower, different color, different medium. So in this case, I would use again, the fusible dissolvable tearaway because half of it has gone away. And so 
If we can get a real good close up of this, let me show you the back side of what this looks like. Notice you don't see any stabilizer in the open area. And that's because the fusible dissolvable tearaway is 50% water soluble and 50% tearaway. That means if there's no thread holding it down, it washes away and the stabilizer stays only behind the thread. So fusible dissolvable tearaway, if you can fuse it, do it. Thank you very much.